eliminate each other mm -hmm. or is it going to be like okay you're putting them against total opposites to where it's like well no I, I i don't look at it so much as a matter of i think with a small handful of candidates it's certainly total opposites if we're talking about the candidates that were booed at the recent uh california democratic convention however i think it's going to be more a matter of just informing the voters who is a better option or who they might perceived to be a better option because for example in 2000 what was it 2007 2008 obama Barack obama was a virtual unknown and hillary yeah. clinton was the clear front runner and he basically blew past her and ended up making the nomination and i've been making this argument with a lot of people that say oh well, biden's a front runner he's gonna get the nomination if we were going based off that logic john edwards would have been the 44th president based on december 2006 polling yeah and we all know how that ended yeah so i think that's just plus the thing. That's you know just, part of yang's strategy is people googling who's that asian dude next to joe biden <laughs> so well, it's, it's it's also a matter of this is a guy who's not known for you know political appearances he's yeah. not known as a, a congressman or a senator or a mayor in pete Buttigieg's case so or vice president in joe biden's case so that's the kind of appeal that he can have. The question, though, it's is... both ways. Can you actually do it? Ex can well, you that, actually ex execute it? Right. It's but, the same thing as, you know, the per current president. And as well so, as... So, yeah. serve, you know, since we've had the white man talking this whole oh time. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm just curious, like, what do you make of the whole Damn, debate son. situation? Like, what Super sort of issues are you kind of listening to? Like, because, you know, there is a lot of shit that our president is doing specifically towards women as well as specifically towards black people and people of color well i'm just looking at a presidential candidate that has i don't know um because right now i'm all for bernie i feel to burn 2020 but uh <laughs> because all the other candidates it, I, I don't want to get into it because it's going to be a rabbit hole for me um i just mean like in general like what sort of issues like i'm not saying you have to I take think a stance health care yeah. is a very big issue i believe our climate and environmental is, is a big issue like our green like th that's huge and i don't think people are really paying attention to that like <laughs> our world is in a crisis right now the climate our the our ecosystem all the bullshit it, it's crazy we need to focus on that because people think like oh well we need to focus on humans it's like fuck we live here too and if it's not for the goddamn earth and all that shit we wouldn't be here so there were I actually think presidential candidates that wanted to talk about that issue and the dnc said we're not going to debate which on is, climate change which given that this is technically the you know in in the trump and that's trump, my concern in trump's america the democratic party is the party for stopping climate change yeah so it just kind of leaves you with your hands in the air like, wait, what? Yeah, nobody cares about the environment. Except for Andrew Yang. He wants to quadruple. And Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. He, 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 he wants to qu quadruple a for forestry budget as well as, you know, and I want a candidate work on nuclear that is power. focusing on this wide student loan debt. Like I'm, For I sure. know, I know, I'm being selfish, but no, I just 100%. need. It's a I trillion just, dollar issue. We, like. need, we need a can, we need a presidential candidate that cares about the millennials, not about the the baby boomers and who's in office right now. We just honestly, I know this sounds so cruel of me, but those white men just need to die off, like because they're, they're not going to be here any longer. It's us. We are the faces. So I don't understand what they're trying to hold on to. They're trying to hold on power. to this, this piece of exactly this piece of power, but they need to let it go and. Right, right now, like that's why I love Bernie because he's focusing on the now issues and how to better the future. Because right now, what we're doing, we're fucking this shit. Like, if if I'm we, down for Bernie, if Yang is his VC, if his VP, because Bernie this, will probably die in office. <laughs> yeah, but even, here's the thing, though. Even even Andrew Yang's kidding. had a couple of. I'm just kidding. Of, <laughs> you weren't. You were kidding. You really were. No, but Andrew. But Yang, that man is old. <laughs> that dude. No, he's, like he's, he's old, but old. he looked like the Crip Keeper. Of but the it's okay because <laughs> as long as Bernie's in office, then no, his ideologies and what he's trying to implement and what he's trying to plant for our foundation will continue. So it doesn't matter if he's only in office for a year or two years, he dies off. Someone else is going to say, okay, we like his policies. We like the change that he made. Let's continue what he's doing. So mm -hmm. I don't think just because Bernie's going to die off, shit's going to 
you know, go to pieces. I think that there's a lot of people who are behind him and see this, the sense that he's making on what he's trying to do. It's just these fiscally conservative people who feel like, oh, how are we going to pay for shit? And that's a fucking... I, I, and, and like I said, a rap Fun fact, uh, uh, Bernie Sanders yeah. doesn't believe black people deserve reparations. Just want to say that. I mean, that's but, not true, but okay. Look, look, I can get into Andrew that. Andrew Yang I think, does. I think it's... Bernie Sanders honestly, does. At Andrew this point, Yang does. He doesn't believe it's feasible, but I mean... We're it, still no, Bernie Sanders holo- does believe in reparations. We're still paying Holocaust payments I, for we didn't America can you let her finish I, I just gave you a fact can you let her finish though but I don't I do agree I think thinking about reparations not right now and having handouts and giving people I think that's completely stupid right now it's not a handout that's like justice that's owed to black people <sighs> For the people that were like for our great 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 Continue, ancestors, like, we but still, that's God. but that's we're talking about this. yeah. But right we're now, still, like mass. This isn't that, a political debate. But then we're that, talking about politics. Now we're talking about. Show. We're not talking about politics. We're talking politics adjacent. But now we're, we're talking, talking about. Gonna start stealing yeah. my words. We're talking you're about. Not gonna do. We're, we're talking to <laughs> steal my word adjacently, you bitch. We're talking <laughs> no, about. So. We're talking about the news topic. We're not talking about the issues. Like, but I'm saying those are issues. We're, we're, and if I don't think reparations is a big of an issue right now. I think dismantling the the systematic the racism and and all this bullshit that's in it's our institutions. Form of reparations. I, like, if you're gonna dismantle racism, that's a form of reparations. I mean, you can't really justice. When, you can't look, really. But that's but a form people, of eradicate but racism when, but with policy. When we think of reparations, we think of some monetary value. We think of. I'm not we, talking about money. I'm talking about but, in the but justice in general, system. All we that. think like anybody, the normal person. When you say like reparation, that. okay, I, I don't think like that. You don't think like that. But the normal person, the simple-minded person out there in the world, excuse me, folks, but it's true. You they're going to think. This. They're going to think the people on Facebook, the people that we went to school with, all them simple-minded people that just went to high school and barely graduated or didn't d- graduate high school at all, they're going to talk about, oh, we need that money back, fuck all that bullshit, blah, 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 blah. They're thinking monetary value. And right now, that's not a... Uh, I mean, money is power in the U.S., but... Which is where Land Andrew Yang and Bernie too. Sanders would diverge in terms of uh, sharing a ticket, I think. Yeah, I could see that. Which is the problem with the Democratic Party, because people don't want to work together, and you're like... You're well, I mean, that's also, literally why we have 24 office. candidates. Well, keep in mind, Bernie Sanders is a Democratic Socialist, and Andrew Yang he's is not a, is a Democrat, a, though. Is a no, he's not, but he's a is Democratic, a Democratic Socialist. That's libertarian. Party, <laughs> he's a libertarian. Libertarian Socialist. No, 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 he's not even a Libertarian. And the Democrats um, will never let an outsider win the ticket. Well, that's the thing, though, is that... That's just that, not going to happen. Well, th- but that's the thing, is that we... And I've been having this argument with people I know in my neck of the woods where they'll argue with me you know well why would people want to join one party over the other and it's like well it's simple we have a two party system Mm -hmm. we're not Spain we don't have a Podemos party like they have in Spain we don't have multiple parties like they have in Brazil or the UK so in the United States if you want to join a particular party in this in 2019 in this day and age let's face it if you're against Trump you're probably going to be a Democrat if you're Against Trump, you're probably not going to become a Republican given the fact that he's got just about a 100% approval rating from his own party. So, and I think within the Democratic Party, you have those divisions. I'm not going to deny it. Those divisions are certainly there. Um, I just think that you do have candidates that waver along the ideological spectrum. And I just Mm -hmm. don't, I see Andrew Yang being... He's someone who looks a little bit clinically at the economic issues rather than right, right. fully engulfing exactly, exactly. in the bigger issues that people mm-hmm. are talking about. Not to mention, historically, people who wind up becoming president with a strong business background just wind up not being the best presidents. In fact, we had two presidents before Donald Trump who were both New Yorkers with the financial Hold on. clout to make them and president. And what, what would Andrew Yang to say to that? Donald Trump isn't a businessman. He's a marketer. He is, but he's made a pretty lucrative business off of being off of a being real a marketer. estate marketer. Yeah. yeah. And he also basically inherited his dad's money. So, yeah. You know. but, but to finish my point that typically when you have people with that kind of economic background, we wind up in economic ruin. Case yeah. in point, Martin Van Buren and Chester Allen Arthur, both of them were very – you know, autocratic with their money, and we ended up in the panic of 1837. 
And we had a bit of an economic bust in the 1880s when Chester Allen Arthur was president. He also became president not by election, but because the guy before him was only president for three months and then was shot. Who's, and then he said, Chester Arthur will be president. And he was the guy that nobody wanted president. So, and in the case of Donald Trump, you know, he won the Electoral College, but he also didn't win the popular vote. So I I kind of look at these 20 candidates that are going to be going on the debate stage and just simply think that everybody needs to make a very conscious decision mm-hmm. if they're going to, you know, look at all these candidates and think, oh, I like this person because blank. I like this person because blank. And it also just depends on where you're at at the, uh, the ideological spectrum, which is something that I think I'd I- love to show off on the show one day. I think... I mean, ideally, I think it's just so early right now. It, that it's, too. It's, yeah. re- it's really hard to, like, find quality information on any of the candidates. Well, there's so many. That's the other thing. And that's that what I'm saying. Like, you literally, Bernie Sanders was you like literally have to, You literally have to dig into every single one, and you have to go to, like, multiple sources to find out, like, multiple things. Like, you right. have to look at their website. You have to look at where they're appearing. You have to look at who they're talking to. You have to and look even at what some of their saying. websites aren't complete. Yeah. And, and on the issues, which yeah, is scary. Yeah, so it, it's a lot right now. But as Kenny was saying earlier, this is a sports show. So let's get back to sports on that note. Wow, you just put it on me mm. as if these players in these locker rooms don't have the same conversations. Well, I don't know if they're talking do about they? how much they love they the do. Green New Deal and, you know. No, these NFL players aren't dumb. A lot I'm going to go back to that once we get into college, our other topic. What's, what's his name? And more name? and more uh, of them are. Winslow? Or Is that his name, Winslow? Kellen Winslow. Yeah, the so I'm going to hold on to that when, when, when we get to that. All right, cool. Let's do it. So just remind me because, you know, I'll be high and I'll be forgetting I'll, stuff. I'll be low <laughs> and I'll be high. Yeah. And I'll be low. We're going to stop that right now. Let's talk about it. Let's I know that wasn't grammatically it. correct, guys, but I was talking about Pete. Nah, nah, you're good. No, nah, I was talking about the Kid Cudi song, but okay. Yeah, we're not going to talk about Kid Cudi songs when we don't like the albums. So, one of the biggest stories of the week, Cam Jordan, he got a big extension, three years, $52 million with 40 in guarantees. Bag. Kenny posed the question, is he a Hall of Fame player? Scared of bag, sis. I don't. I don't know if he'd appreciate me calling sis, but you know, he do. He does sis. have really long hair, bro. Bruh, it, bruh is a gender neutral term, mm-hmm. and sis can be a gender neutral term he don't, as well. He don't sis is gender yeah. neutral. Really? If bruh is, I, well, bruh is like that's a cultural thing. Like I can show you. And where so they is call sis. Me. I mean, I say bruh to my sister when like she so says something stupid. So, but I feel like people. I don't hear people say sis. But it's a I've saying. I want to talk about a dude a lot. I know it's a saying, but it's like it's but weird he knows when I hear. That I'm not gonna sit there. I'm not. Yeah, I'm yeah, not yeah. emasculating him. Sorry, Cam yeah. Jordan. I'm Let's not emasculating it. you. I'm just saying the secure first, the bag. For the but first decade like of the 21st century, bruh. it was dude. For the second decade of the 20th century, it was bruh. Yeah, but we always go with like the male masculine term. That's why it's like, yeah, it's weird. It's never patriarchy. We are a patriarchal society that needs to be dismantled. Exactly. Wow. Okay, I wouldn't go that far, but close. Yeah, that was a lot. Close. But you know, this is a sports uh, show, so yeah, this you is know. a sports show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> cool story. Bro. It's my fault for opening the wormhole. <laughs> you did. But yeah, but Cam Jordan has seventy-one point five sacks for his career. How many years? I think nine. Uh, eight. he was drafted in twenty eleven, so eight. That's pretty good pace oh, wow. for a guy who was a D tackle slash three four defensive end in college. Who I really wanted the Raiders to get, but. Really stupid. So it's all good. He's really been happy. he's been rated a top one two defensive end by Sporting News, Associated Press, Pro Football Focus, Pro Football Writers Association. Literally since twenty fifteen, so he's pretty much been the best player at his position for at least four years now. Three and or four he, years now. And he'd be an all pro D tackle. He's on some Richard Seymour type excellence. That's actually a great comparison just because it's like he's But he wasn't he's, as highly touted. He's being excellent without really having a lot of guys without really having a lot of eyes on him. No he, he came after Will Smith and uh others. The thing is though God bless the dead. How does he compare to Aaron Donald? He doesn't compare to Aaron Donald. That's not fair. Aaron Donald is a freak of nature. And it's superhuman, and you cannot compare anybody to him. 
Khalil Mack. You, you can't compare him. To Fletcher Cox. Go back and look at. He, does, he has like twice as many times. sacks as Fletcher Cox. Well, actually. Fletcher Cox has the has the misfortune of, of being. being-